Good morning, good morning. How are you? How many are doing well? How many are doing extraordinary? Oh, wow, look at that. All right. I should go the, I could go the opposite direction. How many are just doing poorly? No poor leaves here? Oh, man, I think you're lying. You know, we don't, we don't want to admit when we're doing poorly, do we? We don't admit when we're doing, having struggles, but, uh, but we do have those. Well, God is good, yes? God is good all the time, and it's good to see you. It's good to be here with you and everyone else. And we're going to jump into the Word here in, in a moment and, uh, and just see what the Lord wants to do. Uh, you all have one of these. Right, so, and uh, I'm sure there will, there will be more. You could take some as you go home, you know, if you want some more, take it to the family, whatever. We'll tell you why. If you haven't figured out why you have one of these, we'll uh, get to that place. Amen. Well, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for you are awesome and you are great. We thank you, Jesus, for all that you do and all that you've done in our hearts and our lives. Lord Jesus, just, we just give you worship and praise today. We thank you for your word which is eternal, Lord Jesus, your word that brings life and health and spirituality into our lives. And so we thank you for these things. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who moves in our lives. And we ask this morning that you would just touch, touch each and every one of our lives, Lord, today through your word. Let your word, Lord, be central, Lord, to us today. And Lord, that your word would bring fruit in our lives. Lord, and in other lives, we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. I want to just say a quick shout out to our live stream uh, family that are in Digital Church today. So I just want to say praise God for each and every one of you that are out there in live stream. And we, we just worship you and, and just thank the Lord for you. And all the people in the house today, we're so thankful as, as well. Uh, let, let's, let's jump in. I'm going to read part of our passage today. It's with the same passage as last week. It's found in the book of Galatians in the New Testament. And we're gonna, it's in the fifth chapter. And I'm just going to read the passage that lists the fruit of the Spirit. That's what I'm going to be, just read that here. It says, verse 22, chapter 5 of Galatians says this. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus has crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. Great passage. Encouraging passage. And as we talked about last week, right before that, he gave us the, the works of the flesh. And he's contrasting, the Apostle Paul is contrasting these two because they are two totally different lifestyles. That the, 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 the work of the flesh that, that he talks about here, that work of the flesh, he says that is a lifestyle and that is a life that is separated from God. There are those, he was going to talk to us, so the fruit of the Spirit is a life that is dedicated and open to the moving of Jesus in our life and, and the Holy Spirit moving in our lives. But we could also, as a Christ follower, still have works of the flesh in our lives. Can you say yes to that? Sometimes our flesh gets a hold of us and we give in to it. And so we had a question in a store that we came out of illustration uh, last time, and we talked about the fact of, you know, two dogs. I want to ask the question this week. Uh, which dog did you feed bet more this week? The illustration was you have two dogs, they, and they grow up together, and one dog gets fed a whole bunch of stuff, and the other dog doesn't get very much to eat. So the one who has a lot of food grows strong, and the one who doesn't grows weak. In our lives, we struggle between the works of the flesh and the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And we choose 
every day which one we're going to feed. So how did you do this week? Did you, did you, did you resource your life with the fruit of the Holy Spirit to 90%? 70%? Fifty percent? And of course, whatever that percentage drops down, the percentage on the other side increases. And so the Apostle Paul is wanting us to look at how do we live our life? And he's telling us that the Holy Spirit resources us to live the life that Jesus lived. To live like Jesus. To live like a Christ follower. He resources us to do that. So we look at the fruit of the Spirit and understand that it's a work of the Holy Spirit. Fruit of the Holy Spirit is a work of the Holy Spirit, or maybe a better image is it's an outflow of the Holy Spirit producing what we cannot produce on our own. The Holy Spirit resources us with his, the fruit of the Holy Spirit and that fruit of the Holy Spirit, it comes from him. And we cannot do it without him. We cannot have the fruit of the Holy Spirit without the Holy Spirit. The good news is when you become a Christ follower, the Holy Spirit comes into your life and my life, bringing new life, which we call being born again. The Holy Spirit comes in and gives us a brand new life, a brand new nature. Now it's our part to, to feed into that nature. And this is part of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So we're going to walk through some of those today. And that's why you have a little reminder of fruit. That's what the little fruit is all about today. This is a reminder to say, okay, I, we have just given you some fruit. And you're going to get some more when you go out because I got a lot. <laughs> so you have this fruit. What are you going to do with it? This is representing the fruit of the Spirit. So are you going to go home and set it down somewhere and let it rot? Or are you going to indulge in it? Let the Holy Spirit fill us with life-giving, supernatural living stuff. So this is a little reminder. What are we going to do with it? Because the Holy Spirit is always 24-7, all the time, offering to move into our life and to bless us and to resource us and to guide us. So we can either choose to follow that, him or not to. We could choose to have the Holy Spirit cultivate his fruit in us, or we could choose to cultivate the works of the flesh in us. And our whole Christ follower life in this world is going to keep that tension the whole time because we still have a fallen nature. So there's always gonna be that tension. But the Holy Spirit wants to lead us in a way that the majority of what we do and how we do it and how we live our lives are lived out through the word of Jesus and his Holy Spirit, producing good fruit in our lives. So we already talked about some of the fruit, and today we're going to begin with patience. <laughs> P 
patience. Oh, how did you do with that this week? Patience, I think, is one of, one of the one of the hardest there is. I mean, we want what we want when we want it. We don't like waiting for anything. And in a culture that puts up and puts into the forefront instant gratification, we grow up in a culture of instant gratification. And you could, you could track it back and say, you know, here's different time periods where you thought this is where it really started. For, in a commercial sense, I think that really, you know, really forwarded this whole idea of instant gratification. Can you remember the, uh, the burger commercial that says, you could have it. You could have it your way. Everything you want, you could have it your way. And you could have it right now. Instant gratification. Instant. We want instant gratification. We don't want to wait. In my, my father's generation, goes a little far back, my father's generation, when you wanted to buy a house, when you wanted to buy a car, there was no credit. It is you have the cash or you don't have the cash. Loans, credit was not given on a, on a regular like basis from banks or stuff. You might get a loan from a friend or something, but for banks, for cars, definitely not back then. And what do you have to do? Well, you had to wait until you had enough money. But then all of a sudden, man, loans came in and, and anybody could pretty much get a loan today. You know, instant. Instant gratification. Instant this. Instant that. I'm not against loans. But what I am looking at is that a lot of times we've made it so free that we don't understand about the benefit of patience, of waiting. Patience uh, here in the scripture has a variety of nuances, such as steadfastness. It could be translated steadfastness or long-suffering in the face of persecution or provocation. <laughs> Patience is having the ability of the Holy Spirit to be long-suffering in the face of persecution or provocation. So it's not just waiting for something nice or good, but it's more talking about long-term suffering in the face of persecution. Patience. How are we with that? It describes here the attitude towards people that Jesus had. And the Apostle Paul puts it this way in the sense of this is the attitude that Jesus had when it came to patience, that patience endurance of wrong without anger. Patience endurance of wrong without anger. So when you get wronged, when somebody hurts you, the fruit of the Spirit's going to say, choose patience instead of anger. Choose kindness, we're going to talk about kindness later here, instead of anger. So this idea of patience is this idea of being in a place of pressure that is not a good pressure on us. It's a suffering. It's, it's a 
thing of having to deal with this problem over and over and over again. So he describes it. This is, but Jesus' attitude is, you know, patience and endurance. That's his attitude. That's how Jesus dealt with people. He was patient with them. Aren't you glad Jesus is patient with you? All the time. <laughs> Amen. All the time. Because I know me. And I know Jesus has to put up a lot with me. How about you? But he does it with love and patience, long-term patience. In other words, he doesn't put a limit on when he stops being patient. How many of us put a limit on being patient? <laughs> I'll go this far and no more. <laughs> you are off the Christmas list. <laughs> right? That's it, man. How's your patience, patient factor today? How's it been this week? Patience is described here as one of the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which means that the Holy Spirit takes whatever amount of natural patience or human patience that we have, that what he does is he takes that and he infuses it with the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. It becomes a fruit because it comes from the Holy Spirit. Every one of these things come from the Holy Spirit. It's a characteristic of the, who the Holy Spirit is. And the Holy Spirit's been given to us so that we too can develop those characteristics. It's not a human thing. It's a spiritual thing. When we talk about the fruits of the Holy Spirit here, it is not a human thing that I can do in my humanness. This is a spiritual thing where the Holy Spirit comes in and offers us these characteristics, these traits, these what's called the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And being a fruit of the Holy Spirit, it can't be produced by us. It's just like this it grew not because I made it grow, right? It grew on its own because this is how God created the world so that seeds and others could be planted in the ground and then it grows. I cannot produce this myself. So when you see the fruit of the Spirit can't be produced by any human effort in us. It's the reception of the Holy Spirit each and every day into our lives to build these things in our life. This, spirit, this, this fruit of patience, it makes it spiritual, not physical. The fruit of patience helps us to endure wrong without retaliating or, ta or attacking or shunning. That's why we need this fruit of patience, so that we can endure wrong without retaliating or shunning people because of what has happened in our lives. The Holy Spirit moves upon our heart and our attitudes to remove anger against the person, the action, the situation that we are struggling with because this is happening to us. The fruit of the Holy Spirit here resources us with long suffering. Patience here is, could be translated wrong, long suffering. He gives us the ability not just to endure in long suffering, 
not just endure in long suffering, but he gives us the strength to go through periods of injustice and wrongs done to us by giving us patience, or another way to put it, by giving us a calmness in our life in the midst of the storm. A calm that comes in and says, I could do this because it's the calm of the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life. And that move, and he moves us forward so that it brings us to a place that we don't want to retaliate and that our anger dissipates. That's the fruit. But we have to position ourselves to cultivate the fruit of the Holy Spirit in our life. Before we move on to the next one, what situation or situations are you facing now that requires you to be patient? I encourage you to jot that situation down. Our situations <laughs> that right now you're struggling with patience. Right now. You're struggling with that. Write it down. And then begin praying over it today. Just begin praying over that situation, saying, Jesus, your Holy Spirit, give me, give me patience. Give me that calm. Remove that frustration from me. Remove that anger with, from me and replace it with the fruit of patience. And just keep praying that until it happens. Just praying it until it happens. The next fruit today is goodness. Goodness. Here it is. Here it is, has the sense of righteousness. So the fruit of goodness is really speaking here of righteousness. And I, I, I'll put it this way to maybe kind of break it down. This fruit of goodness means living rightly and doing the right thing. That's what righteousness really is, living rightly and doing the right thing. That's righteousness. There's a righteousness that we get in Jesus when we are born again because he's made us righteous. But there's this outflow of righteousness that comes in doing the right thing. Doing the right thing. True goodness or true righteousness comes from knowing that the one who is truly and fully righteous, which is Jesus, we need to know Jesus to truly be fully righteous. If you have not come to Jesus, you've not asked Jesus to come into your life, you haven't realized that there's only one way to eternal life and there's only one way that our sins will ever be forgiven fully, and that is through Jesus. And when he does forgive us, when we ask him to come into our life and forgive us of all our sins and we repent of them, then we are made righteous. We are in right standing with God, and not just right standing with him, but we have a righteousness in us that we are to live out. And that is somewhat of this fruit here of goodness or righteousness. True righteousness comes from his new life, but we need to act on it. We need to act righteous. We need to do the right things in our life. We need to do the right things on our job. We need to do the right things at school. We need to do the right things in our homes. We need to do the right things in our marriage. We need to, do you get it? So it works out in our lives. We need to act on it. One of the reasons the fruit of the Holy Spirit is in this, this list is because we need righteousness. Because the Holy Spirit wants to work goodness and righteousness throughout every aspect of our lives. So that we have a right living, you know? And people see that in our life. 
How's your goodness today? Let's take an inventory of our lifestyle this week regarding goodness and righteousness or living rightly. And I, I'm saying it, and I, and I just have to chuckle to myself because I have to do the same thing, and, and that is, but we really need, I really want us to do that this week. Take an inventory. How's our righteousness? And that's not one of the boast things, and sometimes, you know, Christ followers could get into this place. Well, I'm such a righteous, good Christ follower. Well, if I'm calling myself a righteous, good Christ follower, I have missed the boat. Because only one is good, and that's Jesus. And only one is fully righteous, and that's Jesus. I am a work that is working out in me. I'm a work in progress. And I ain't going to be there until I step into eternity. So my family members, just got to know it. But that doesn't give me excuse to say, oh, it's just because I'm not there yet. We need to work on growing in righteousness. So take, take, a, take an inventory this week and see how is your righteousness? How, is, how are you living rightly? And let us make a plan to eliminate what is unrighteous in our life. Can we do that? Eliminate what is unrighteous in our life. Eliminate that through repentance and choose to start a new way of living through the fruit of the Holy Spirit and goodness. It's hard sometimes being a Christ follower, isn't it? But the good news is Jesus gives us and the Holy Spirit gives us everything we need to, to do it. We just need to partner with him. Kindness. Kindness through the Holy Spirit. The act of being kind to all people. That's what it's, it's, it's the focus of is. Kindness here is the act of being kind to all people. All people. This is why we need the Holy Spirit. Because I can't be nice to all people and myself. I'm sure if I said right now, oh, think of that person that really bugs you. Think of that, you know, thing that somebody said at work or at the supermarket or anywhere on the news that just and you find yourself yelling at the radio or the TV what a jerk you are what are you what are you saying that that is so stupid that no oh, that that is all wrong that is false no that is this uh, you been there that was just yesterday right I mean, come on. So when we talk about kindness, it's the act of being kind to all people, whether they're wonderful people, whether they're challenging people, whether they're just downright rude and arrogant people. It doesn't matter. They're people. And the fruit of the Holy Spirit of kindness here, the Holy Spirit enables us to be kind to all people. Showing kindness or showing benevolence is another way of translating this. Showing kindness or benevolence. As we look at this and digging into the words there here, kindness, kindness is more than just being nice. It really is. It's a, it's a lot more than just being nice. It's an action of kindness coming from a kind and benevolent heart and spirit. 
It's a lifestyle. It's not just a, a one-on action or a one-off action. It's a kindness coming out of a heart of benevolence. It's a lifestyle of being a benevolent, kind person to everybody we meet. And I need the Holy Spirit for that. The Church of Jesus Christ needs the Holy Spirit for that. Because we could be pretty uh, nasty to each other sometimes. We need kindness, the fruit to flow through our lives. And to, for that, we need to open our lives up to let the fruit of the Holy Spirit have room. To have room in us. Pretty much every one of these have a question at the end before I go on to the next. And so here it is again. Where and who do you need to offer kindness to now? All people. But is there, is there that one or two that you could kind of think of that you are not been acting very kindly to? And the Holy Spirit would be saying, show them kindness. Go and, and, and tell them, hey, I'm sorry I haven't been as kind to you as I should be. And the Holy Spirit has convicted me to come and tell you and show kindness. Show them unconditional kindness. Kindness doesn't come with conditions. Kindness is unconditional, just like Jesus' unconditional love. It's unconditional. You show kindness no matter what. Lastly, today is, is faithfulness. Faithfulness. Or being faithful. Here's some ways that, that, that plays out in our lives. Being faithful plays out we are to be faithful to Jesus. We are to be faithful to the faith that Jesus has given us. We are to be faithful. So faithful to Jesus. Faithful to follow him. Faithful to put him first. Faithful, and you just keep putting it in the words. We are to be faithful to our family. Even the ones you shun. We're to be faithful. We're to be faithful to our job. Our faithful at school. Our faithful whatever it is, we are to be faithful in it. Being faithful, following through, doing what we're supposed to be doing. We are to be faithful. Faithful in the job means you give it everything every time. You don't cut corners, you don't take the extra long lunch breaks. That's not faithfulness. We are to be faithful. Faithful also involves the understanding of being true. That to be faithful, we are to be true. Here's some ways that plays out. Being true to ourselves. Be true to ourselves, and that is, be who Jesus called us to be. Be true to ourselves. Don't try to be somebody else. Be faithful to be who you are in Jesus. Don't try to be like somebody else. You are uniquely made. We know that, right? 
You are uniquely made. There's no other you on the planet. It's you. Be faithful to you, to who you are, to who Jesus has created you to be. Be faithful to that. A lot of times we are not faithful to ourselves. We want to mold ourselves into somebody else's image instead of the image that Jesus has placed in us to be who we are. You don't need another Ted. I don't, you know, you don't need to be me. You need to be you. Because it's your uniqueness, it's your giftings, it's your talents, it's your abilities, it's your character, it's who you are that Jesus wants to use to touch other lives. We need to be faithful to that. We need to be faithful to ourselves, be true to how Jesus made us. We also need to be truthful in all things. If we're going to be faithful, it also means to be truthful in all things. That's a hard one. How how many of us kind of bend the truth a little bit? Some by omission. (laughs) You know, I just won't say it. (laughs) But that's not being true to who Jesus is calling us to be. We need need to be truthful in all things, even even if that truth hurts. But when a truth hurts, we better be sharing that truth in love. And as we talked about, love is the controlling fruit in all these. Unconditional love is the controlling fruit in all of these. So when we're being truthful in all things, we need to make sure that love is, is guiding all of that and infusing it so it brings something out of it that's beneficial instead of hurtful. Being, being faithful, our faithfulness here is not quitting. To be a faithful person in Jesus, to be this faithful person who's, who's, who is working out all this out through the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Holy Spirit of being faithful, means we don't quit. We don't quit. We don't quit on ourselves. How many of us have quit on ourselves before other people quit on us? You know? We just been told so many times that we're just horrible people or we just can't do anything good or this or that or we're just that type of person and we quit on ourselves. And we don't have to worry about other people quitting on us because we quit on ourselves. hear this, Jesus has never quit on you, nor will he ever quit on you. There is nothing you could do that will make Jesus quit on you. Some, of, some here, maybe in the room or online, need to hear that. Don't let anybody convince you that you're no good. Jesus never gives up on you. He is faithful. We ought to be faithful here. And we need to not quit on ourselves. Because if Jesus is not going to quit on me, that tells me a lot. Then I should be able to not quit on me.
If that's the case, we were to not quit on others either. How many times have we maybe worked so hard with somebody and they're struggling, they're struggling, and they're struggling, and they're struggling, and they're struggling, and they're they're just not following through with all the help you're helping them with, and then finally you said, I am done. Don't quit. Don't quit. Years ago when we were pastoring La La Puente, one of the members in the church was struggling really, really hard and tried to commit suicide a few times and went into uh, rehabilitation and is to try to go through that. I remember when I went to visit visit her, and I visit her regularly, that she had already quit on herself. And she didn't think she'd ever make it through, that eventually she would succeed in, in killing herself. And every time I'd go see her, I would tell her, I'm not going to quit on you. I'm going to come every week, every week, and we're going to talk, and we're going to see you, and I'm going to be there, and I'm not going to give up on you, so don't give up on yourself. She talked about that horrible, dark tunnel of depression and all those things. I tell her every week, well, you're in that tunnel, but you're just coming close to the curve where you're going to see the light. Don't give up. Don't give up on others. It's part of the fruit of the Spirit. It's part of being faithful. And our supreme, our supreme example is Jesus, who, as I said, never gives up on us. Never gives up. Stay faithful in our actions and promises. The Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit of faithfulness here helps us to stay faithful in our actions and our promises. He infuses those things with his presence and with his resource so that we can be faithful in our actions and our promises. He infuses that in our lives. Faithfulness is a character trait and a fruit. And being a character trait and a fruit, we need to choose to activate faithfulness in our lives. We need to choose to activate faithfulness. We need to choose to act faithfully in our life. It is a choice. It's not just going to automatically happen. It is a choice. All the fruit of the Holy Spirit is a choice. We either choose to to receive and act on the fruit of the Holy Spirit or we choose not to. So when we talk about faithfulness, that it's this fruit characteristic and it's also a choice that we need to activate in our life and act on. In addition, we have the gift of faith. So we have fruit that has faith here, faithfulness, but we also have the gift of faith given to us by Jesus. And those two need to work together. When we talk about being faithful, the fruit of the Holy Spirit and faithfulness, we also need to link that to the gift of faith. When you link those two, there's going to be success. When you link those two, you're going to see change. You're going to see change in those ones. So I encourage you to activate faith in your life. Every single person has been given a measure of faith. Every single person. There's not one person in the world or ever been born in this world that Jesus has not given them faith. 
We need to act on that faith. And when we act on that faith and we link it to faithfulness, we're going to see both grow. We're going to see our faithfulness grow and we're going to see our faith grow. The more we activate our faith, the more faith will grow in our life. The more we activate or the more we participate in the fruit of the Spirit, <clears throat> fruit of the Spirit, then more fruit of the Spirit will grow. I encourage us. Think for a minute. Where do you and I need to be faithful? Worship team, come up. Where do you and I need to be faithful? I want us to think of that. Jot it down. Where are those places in your life? Now, we're supposed to be faithful in every area of our life. I just, I'll say that. But what are those areas right now in your life that if you were to look deeply into them, you would, you would find that you need to be more faithful in those areas. You need to actualize your faith more in those areas. What are they? What are they? Is it something on your job? Is it something in your marriage? Is it something in your faith that you're looking for and, and praying for a miracle and it just doesn't seem to be taking place? Is it your connection to the church? Do you need to actuate more faithfulness in that area? And then I could go on on the list. But where is that? Why do, you th why do you think that I've asked you each and one of these times to write something down? Is because I, in my life, if I don't write it down, I'm not going to do it. Just to say. I might do some of it, but I guarantee you I'm going to forget a bunch of it. So write it down. Pray over them. Write it down and make a plan to actuate these areas of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It's not enough just to be, here's a James quote, it's not enough to be just hearers of the word, but we are to be doers. And you could have the, you could be, have the best memory and still, after you leave, and you go home and you start doing your stuff for the week, guaranteed that some of this, or a lot of this, is just going to seep out. So that's why I asked, write it down on these different ones. Then you could pray over them. Then you could start actualizing some of them. And then we'll see greater faith, greater fruitfulness grow in our lives. Jesus is a great God. And he has good things. And he's given us the Holy Spirit to empower us, to resource us. He's given the Holy Spirit who gives the Holy Spirit, gives us the fruit of, his spirit, of the Spirit. That's for us. But we have to step into it. We have to act on it. Amen? So that's the challenge. That's the challenge. Stand with us. We're going to worship, and then I'll come back up. Thank you, Pastor. I, I love that, that connection uh, to the fruits of the Spirit with inviting the Holy Spirit into our lives. And, and many of us, 
um, maybe were baptized with the Holy Spirit years ago. I know for me, um, it, it was even 30 years ago, which for a middle-aged guy, like, that's a long time. Um, but we can still, even today, in a fresh way, ask the Holy Spirit to come into our lives to um, help us with our situations today. Um, so despite how long it's been since the Holy Spirit has come into your life and you've been filled, let's ask him in a new and fresh way to come today. Amen.
can't just go off of how we feel sometimes. We got to believe and have faith that God is still doing something. He's in the midst of something for your life. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, I know you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Spirit, come and fill each and every one here, each and every one online, Lord Jesus. Right now, Holy Spirit, come and pour out of your presence. Lord, we just open our hearts, we open our lives to you and say, Jesus, come. Holy Spirit, fill us afresh. Fill us anew. Fill us in new anointing, new strength, new power. Lord Jesus, just let your Spirit right now, Holy Spirit, fill us. Just begin to ask the Holy Spirit to fill you afresh and anew or for the first time. Just to ask him to come in, invite him in to fill you with his presence, with his love, with his resource. Even now, Lord Jesus, fill us. Fill us afresh for a new season. Fill us afresh for a new time. Fill us afresh for our lives and our families and our homes. Fill us afresh, Lord Jesus. Lord, as you did with the disciples after they were filled and baptized, Lord, it wasn't a while later until they were filled and baptized again, Jesus, in your presence. Lord, we ask for that right now. Just say, Holy Spirit, come. Baptize me and fill me with your presence. Fill me with your presence, Jesus. Just begin to ask him to fill you. Holy Spirit, just fill us. Fill us afresh. Lord, bring new revelation. Lord, in this time, in this moment right now, Lord Jesus, Lord, speak a word to those you want to speak a word to, Lord Jesus. Lord, just let, just let them hear that word of encouragement, hear that word of direction, hear, hear that word of healing, hear, hear that word in their lives, Jesus, right now. Right now, Jesus, as you're moving, Holy Spirit, pour out, pour out, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, pour out in lives right now. Pour out of the lives in the homes right now, Lord Jesus. Lord, as you they open up in their homes on live stream, or those who might watch this later, Lord, just pour out in their home, pour out in their lives. Lord, fill them with your Holy Spirit and presence of fresh and anew, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray for this right now. We worship you. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh. Renewal and strength and peace and your fruit we receive from you, Jesus, today. We receive from you today. 
If you're online or you're here and you haven't given your life to Jesus yet, you haven't come into new life through Him, I'm asking you today to pray this simple prayer with me. You pray it and you have, He's already given you faith. To just pray this simple prayer. Jesus, come into my life. Make me a brand new person. I repent of all my sins. I turn away from them. I ask you to, bring, to just fill me with your presence. I ask you to give me new life, Lord Jesus. Forgive me today and give me new life in you. In your name, Jesus. And I thank you, Jesus, that you're doing that right now. For those who pray that simple prayer, he's doing it right now. And I encourage you, let us know whether you're in person here or you're live streaming. If you're live streaming, Go to info at connectchurchventura.com. Send us a message. We'd love to rejoice with you. We'd love to give you some next steps. Jesus is a good God. Holy Spirit wants to dwell us all the time and resource us all the time. So as we leave today, please pick as many of these up to go out and share it with your family. And when you're sharing it with your family, just say what it's all about. Just tell them what it's all about so that they might know as well. So I just encourage you that. Encourage you to be praying. Encourage you to be praying for our, 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 our Halloween, th October 31st event. And we want you all to be there. We could use every single one of you. There's some place in that event so you could just be a part of it. I want you to be there. Invite people. Bring candy so they have plenty of candy to give away. Jesus is good, yes? He's good all the time. Lord bless you. Have a great, great day.